A cortisone injection for knee arthritis can feel like a miracle. The pain fades, movement returns, and for a brief moment, life feels normal again. But beneath that relief, there's a growing concern, one that's now backed by real evidence. Because what helps you today may quietly be harming your knee for tomorrow. Hey everyone, Dr. Jeff Pang here. I'm a sports medicine physician currently practicing in the San Francisco Bay Area, and I've treated thousands of patients with joint pain and helped them navigate therapies with injections. For years, I've used both cortisone and PRP, but as the research has evolved, so has my approach. In this video, I'll explain how each treatment works, when I use them, and most importantly, what the science now tells us about their long-term effects. If you or someone you care about is facing this decision, this video could change the way you think about managing knee arthritis. Knee osteoarthritis is one of the most common causes of joint pain and stiffness as we age. It's a progressive condition, meaning it gradually gets worse over time. And while there's no cure, there are ways to manage the symptoms and slow its progression. For many patients, that journey often involves an injection. One of the most common options has been around for decades, and that's cortisone. Corticosteroid injections are cheap, fast-acting, and almost every primary care doctor or orthopedic specialist is familiar with it. Platelet-rich plasma, or PRP on the other hand, is newer. It involves drawing blood, concentrating the platelets, and injecting that back into the joint to help modulate inflammation and promote healing. Both can provide relief, but how they work and what they do to the joint over time is very different. And that difference is what this video is all about. Cortisone works by powerfully suppressing inflammation. When injected into the knee joint, it often provides fast relief, sometimes within just a few days. For patients dealing with constant aching or a painful flare-up, it can feel like a miracle. That's why it's been used for so long. It does actually work, at least, in the short term. Recent studies have raised serious concerns about what cortisone might be doing beneath the surface. A 2017 randomized controlled trial published in JAMA compared intraarticular triamcinolone, this is a type of steroid, to saline placebo in patients with knee osteoarthritis. The results were surprising. Patients receiving steroids had significantly more cartilage loss than those receiving placebo, despite no significant difference in pain outcomes. Newer studies are also sounding similar alarms. A 2025 paper followed patients for two years and found that repeated cortisone injections were associated with faster cartilage degeneration on MRI. In other words, while the pain went down, the joint continued to deteriorate and potentially at a faster rate. And this effect is not just seen in the knee. A 2021 study in the Journal of Bone and Joint Surgery found that intraarticular steroids in the hip increased the risk of rapidly destructive joint disease up to 12 times higher than patients who did not receive steroid injections. The takeaway is this, cortisone is not neutral. Relief today might come at the cost of cartilage tomorrow, and for many patients, that trade-off simply is not worth it. Yet despite all the concerns, there are still situations where I believe cortisone has a place. The key here is to use it judiciously, with a clear purpose and a plan. For example, I will still occasionally recommend cortisone for patients dealing with a major life event where pain relief is urgently needed. Think of someone traveling for a once-in-a-life time vacation where a patient attending their daughter's wedding. They need to walk, to move, to enjoy the moment, and a well-timed cortisone injection can make that possible. I also use it in situations for patients with end-stage osteoarthritis, those with severe bone-on-bone -bone changes who are already scheduled for a knee replacement surgery. In these cases, the goal isn't to preserve cartilage anymore, it's to buy time and reduce suffering while they wait for surgery. Just keep in mind that you can to get a shot in your knee in the few months prior to surgery as it increases the risk of joint infection during or after the operation. Most surgeons recommend avoiding cortisone injections for at least three months before a knee replacement to minimize this risk. But in both situations, I make the same point very clear. 
Cortisone is not a long-term fix. It should never be used on a monthly or routine basis. Instead, it should be viewed as a bridge, one that gets you across a short-term obstacle without sacrificing what's left of the joint in the process. Used thoughtfully, cortisone can still be a helpful tool, but we have to stop reaching for it reflexively. There's really just too much at stake. Platelet-rich plasma, or PRP, takes a completely different approach. Instead of shutting down inflammation like cortisone, PRP works by modulating it, supporting the body's natural healing processes rather than suppressing them. The process begins with drawing your blood, usually between 60 and 120 cc's, though even higher volumes may be needed for older patients or those with more severe arthritis. That blood is then spun in a centrifuge to concentrate the platelets. These are tiny cell fragments loaded with growth factors and signaling molecules. The final product is then injected directly into the knee joint under ultrasound guidance where it works to reduce inflammatory signaling, recruit repair cells, and potentially stimulate cartilage support and preservation. The thing to keep in mind is that relief after PRP injections do not happen overnight. It can take several weeks to notice an improvement, and sometimes multiple PRP injections are needed. But for many patients, the effects are long-lasting, often 6 to 12 months and sometimes even even more. And unlike cortisone, which may accelerate joint degeneration with repeated use, PRP appears to do the opposite. It's not magic. It won't regrow a brand new joint, but it's the first treatment I've used in my clinic that feels like it helps the knee function better over time, not just feel better over a few weeks. One of the most exciting developments in recent years is the growing body of research suggesting that PRP may do more than relieve pain. It might actually help preserve or even regenerate cartilage in knees affected by osteoarthritis. A 2022 study followed patients who received PRP and used MRI with T2 mapping to assess cartilage quality. The researchers found that PRP not only reduced joint inflammation, but also slowed cartilage degeneration compared to controls. Patients experienced meaningful improvements in both pain and joint function over the course of the study. Meanwhile, a 2024 study used used ultrasound imaging to evaluate cartilage thickness and integrity. The results were promising. Patients receiving PRP showed signs of increased cartilage thickness and improved structural appearance, suggesting a potential for early regeneration, especially in those with mild to moderate arthritis. So now let's ask the question, how does PRP actually stack up against cortisone when we look at patient outcomes? Fortunately, we now have direct comparisons in the form of randomized controlled trials, systematic reviews, and meta-analyses. And when we look at the data, a clear trend emerges. While cortisone may offer quicker relief, PRP provides more durable, clinically significant benefits, especially over the long term. A 2024 systematic review and meta-analysis analyzed 35 randomized controlled trials involving over 3,300 patients with knee osteoarthritis. It directly compared cortisone injections to both hyaluronic acid injections and PRP injections. What they found was striking. Cortisone and PRP performed similarly in the short term, with both providing some initial relief. But beyond that, the differences became clear and clinically meaningful. PRP outperformed cortisone at every single follow-up beyond the early phase. At mid and long-term time points, PRP produced greater improvements in both pain and function, and these changes weren't just statistically significant, they exceeded the minimal clinically important difference. That means patients weren't just seeing a small bump on a graph, they were feeling real improvements in how their knee moved and how much it hurt. Cortisone, by contrast, failed to deliver meaningful benefits beyond the short term. Another 2024 study reviewed 48 randomized controlled trials and more than 9,000 knees treated with corticosteroids, hyaluronic acid, PRP, or even bone marrow aspirate concentrate. This is more commonly known as bone marrow stem cells. At six months, PRP emerged as the clear leader. Not only did it produce significant improvements in both pain and function compared to placebo, but it also ranked highest overall 
overall among all treatments in terms of effectiveness. PRP had a SUCRA score of over 91, meaning it had the highest likelihood of delivering meaningful clinical improvements. Corticosteroids, by comparison, were near the bottom with a SUCRA score of just 15, barely outperforming placebo. That means PRP isn't just better, it's significantly more likely to help patients feel and function better in a way that matters to their daily life. Okay, so with all this information, what should you do? How do you decide between PRP and cortisone? The answer depends on your goals, your timeline, and your specific situation. If you're looking for quick short-term relief, maybe you're traveling soon, attending a big event, or just trying to get through a temporary flare-up, cortisone might still make sense. But it should be used sparingly and with a clear understanding of the potential risks. It's not a tool for long-term management, it's a short-term solution. If your goal is to preserve your knee, stay active, and reduce the likelihood of surgery, especially Especially if you're in the earlier stages of arthritis or you're a younger patient, PRP is often the better investment. Now it won't work overnight, but it offers the potential for longer lasting relief without accelerating joint damage, and in some cases, it may even help support the healing environment within the joint. Now keep in mind, no treatment is perfect, but the conversation is shifting from temporarily masking symptoms to embracing therapies that promote long-term joint health. And while PRP is showing real promise, there's one thing many people, even most orthopedists, don't realize, and that's not all PRP is created equal. The way it's prepared and delivered can dramatically affect the results. So if you're thinking about trying PRP, watch this video next. It might be the difference between a breakthrough outcome and a missed opportunity.